With 72 submarines in service, the United States fields the largest underwater fighting force in the world, stealthy and absolutely deadly against surface vessels. Submarines are tasked with deterring foreign aggression, nuclear deterrence, intelligence gathering, and even providing fire support for land forces with land attack missiles. But for the most of a submarine's lifespan, it will glide through the oceans of the world completely undetected and, as they say, out of sight, out of mind. What is life like under the sea for those who man these secretive weapons of war, though. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Infographic Show. Today we're taking a look at what life is like aboard a submarine. Just a quick note about a sponsor of this video, Skillshare. You're about to learn how sailors spend 90 days or more at a time out at sea. But if that was you and you had Skillshare, you could spend that time learning brand new skills or honing existing ones. Skillshare is an online learning community with over 20,000 classes in photography, video production, management, and more, all available online right now. The first 1,000 people to sign up by visiting the link in the description will receive two months of Skillshare absolutely free. Join Skillshare and start learning today. Now, let's get back to the video. Not every man can be a submariner, and though it is a 100% all-volunteer force, the U.S. Navy's submarine fleet has very stringent entry requirements. Individuals must be male, pass a series of academic tests, psychological evaluations, and intensive courses on the fundamentals of submarine operations. With deployments that can last for hundreds of days at a time, and disaster being only one mistake away, the Navy must be confident that it is entrusting some of the most expensive weapons in its arsenal, and the 100-plus lives within them to only the most psychologically stable and academically qualified individuals. But it isn't a life for everyone who applies. Technically, the U.S. deploys submarines for about 90 days at a time. But the realities of a dynamic geopolitical environment sometimes means that submariners will be out at sea for a hundred days or more, pulling into port only long enough to stock up on food reserves before putting out to sea again. One submariner interviewed by Task and Purpose said that his longest deployment was for 328 days. That's a long time spent inside a cramped metal tube underwater. As the U.S. Navy only operates nuclear-powered submarines, each sub's endurance is based on the amount of food it can carry. The reactors will typically only be fueled once during the lifetime of a boat, and a need to keep its crew fed is the only thing that limits how long a submarine can stay out to sea for. Both air and water are regenerated internally, so even long after food runs out, a submarine will still provide fresh drinking water and breathable air. The submarine's crew is split up into three six-hour shifts each. Typically, a crew member will have six hours on duty, six hours of study, exercise, and private time, and six hours of sleeping time. This 18-hour day rotation can be disorienting for a crew who spends weeks at a time under the water, and typically crew members only know what time of day it actually is based off of what meal they are being served. Space is at an absolute premium on any submarine, so personal space is extremely limited. Every submariner has typically about 15 square feet to themselves, and sleep in tiny bunks affectionately or not called coffins. Inside your bunk, only a thin sheet of cloth separates you from the outside world, so privacy is nearly non-existent. And because somebody is always sleeping no matter the time of day, submariners have an unwritten rule to never slam doors and always keep volume down to a minimum. Some submarines Submariners, however, have more crew than bunk space, which leads to the much-hated practice of hot bunking, where two or more submariners share one bunk. As one prepares to start their shift, the other takes his place to get his six hours of sleep. Submarines, it seems, are definitely not places for anybody with privacy or personal space issues. Bunks aren't the only place with limited space. There's typically only two showers for the entire crew of up to 130 submariners, and a maximum showering time of three to five minutes is enforced. This not only helps ensure everyone who needs one can get a shower, but it also lessens the strain on the ship's water filtration system, which turns salty seawater into fresh water. There's also typically only a single dryer and washer aboard a submarine, making clean laundry a luxury. For entertainment, there is a tiny gym with typically one to two machines and free weights, which the crew can use. Because space is at such a premium, rooms typically have double uses and the gym may in fact be the torpedo room. The officer's wardroom, where senior officers 
officers dine also serves as an operating theater during medical emergencies. Bathrooms are extremely limited as well, with typically only one bathroom per 40 men. And you'd better know how to use the toilet, because waste has to be held in a special tank to be ejected at the appropriate time. The toilet has to be pressurized before you flush it, but operate it improperly and it will shoot its contents backwards into your face. A rec room typically offers a plasma TV or two, and a large selection of movies to keep the crew entertained. Video game systems are common, along with a small library of games. Though the Navy makes cards and board games freely available to help sailors blow off steam and build camaraderie. The most space aboard a submarine is reserved for the nuclear reactor and the propulsion system, which alone take up about one-third of the sub's total length. The kitchen takes up the second most amount of space and is typically extremely well stocked, the US Navy knowing for decades that a well-fed crew is a happy crew. Life beneath the waves for weeks or even months at a time can be extremely stressful, and so the Navy makes sure its galleys are well stocked. Sailors can enjoy fresh ingredients for the first few weeks of deployment, though after that food is made from non-perishables. Even then though, chefs manage to whip up a variety of dishes from lasagna to lobster to prime rib, and a delicious dessert is always on hand. There is no internet aboard a submarine, and communication with the outside world is reserved for the rare instances that a sub surfaces. Because initiating communications can give away a sub's position, and stealth is the most valuable asset, submariners don't communicate much with the outside world. That means that submariners can go weeks or months without contact family or loved ones, and must rely on the friendships they've developed on board. To make the cramped environment more tolerable for each other, submariners have additional unwritten rules, such as no talk of politics on board, although sports trash talk is acceptable if not encouraged. While all of the military branches are keen on traditions and rites of passage, none are as dedicated to their traditions or have as nuanced rites of passage as the Navy. Partly tradition and partly to help keep morale up, submariners enjoy a tradition of initiating new crew members on their first crossing of the equator, called crossing the line. Everyone who has already crossed the line is known as a shellback, and those who haven't are known as wogs, shorthand for polywogs. The polywogs must polish a set of red trash weights used to compact trash, and then wear them around their necks for a week before the crossing. Wogs are also given an m and which they must keep and defend as their pearl, ensuring that it stays on their person at all times. Upon crossing the equator, the shellbacks spray the wogs with water hoses, and dunk them in cold water which may or may not have been urinated in. Seamen are a strange sort. Then they are escorted to the ward room, where the fattest submariner on board has been dressed in a baby's diaper and covered in whipped cream, vinegar, mayonnaise, pretty much every condiment available. And then the wog must place their pearl inside his belly button and retrieve it back with their mouth. From that day on, the wog is no more and is welcomed as a full-blown shellback. Strange rituals aside, strong camaraderie is what sets submariners apart from other sailors in the US Navy. And when you're spending weeks at a time in a pressurized cylinder straining to hold back the weight of the ocean, it's understandable that you might need to let some steam off in some pretty creative ways. Because of the high stress of their jobs, submariners are often excused somewhat from the Navy's typical strict regulations on hair and facial hair, allowing short beards and longer than usual hair for the notoriously tightly clipped US Armed Forces. Once rejoining the rest of the Navy by pulling into port, however, submariners must get the trimmers out and make sure they're back in regs. Life aboard a submarine is tough, a unique mental and physical challenge that not every sailor is cut out for. Yet has been argued repeatedly by defense analysts across the US, the US Navy's silent service is the most critical element of its national security. From maintaining nuclear deterrence to ensuring the good behavior of not-so-friendly nations, by threatening swift and overwhelming retaliation. Submariners are the world's ultimate, if secretive, peacekeepers. Think you have what it takes to be a US submariner? How would you handle weeks underwater with no fresh air or sunlight? Let us know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video called What Happens If An Airplane Enters A No-Fly Zone. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time!